I have too much <laughs> I'm in London at Heathrow Airport at an airport hotel and I've got all my stuff here. I'm by myself. Jody's not with me. Not because she caught some sense and uh, left me, but because I have a travel photography assignment up in Scotland and I, yeah, it's a solo mission. So I'm heading up there by myself. Uh, it's a short mission and uh, so I kind of don't have everything I usually travel with with me. I left some stuff behind. I have a bunch of winter photography coming up on the channel. Scotland and Iceland. So I thought I would take you through my gear. The gear that I'm taking on this winter photography mission. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, subscribe because yeah, like I said, there's going to be lots of winter photography and landscape photography in Scotland and Iceland coming up in the next couple weeks. Now, let's get down to the gear. And before I get into the gear, I need to say something. This isn't going to be super sub-zero winter photography. Iceland and Scotland, they hover around zero. And when you hover around zero, it's a whole different battle. Minus 15 is actually easier than zero degrees. Because at minus 15, everything's frozen. You don't get soaked, you don't get wet. When you're around zero or one degrees, it's a battle because you really want to stay dry. You have to stay dry or else you're going to freeze. That's where you're going to get hypothermia. That's where you're going to get into some serious trouble. To be honest, I'd much rather have it be minus 15 and dry than zero degrees and drizzly. So the mission for Iceland, the mission for Scotland isn't really to stay warm, it's to stay dry and to keep the wind off us. So I'm gonna open the bags. I haven't planned anything, okay? I haven't planned anything, I probably should have, but I'm kind of winging this. Uh, you might notice I have a new suitcase too. I had my Eddie Bauer suitcase for like two years, it was awesome, but it was getting a little bit big, so I wanted to downsize a little bit. This is a Dakine bag, it's awesome. If you're designing bags, like if you're watching this and you're a bag designer, do this sort of stuff. Have little separate pouches within your bag so that people can organize their stuff a little bit better, especially for somebody like me that's totally not organized. This pouch, that's clothing. That's t-shirts, socks, underwear. And honestly, that pouch, that's all of my clothing essentially, other than the outdoor clothing. I don't really have that much clothing. This pouch is mostly toiletries. Um, there's some hats in there. Um, what do we got in here for winter? Winter stuff. This is my winter hat. This is pretty new. I don't think I've ever worn this. This winter hat is awesome. It's down, which is really light and also really warm. But on top of it, this kind of material on the outside will keep the water off. So it's very resistant to water. It's not going to get soggy. So it, even if it's a little bit wet outside around zero, it's going to be fine. This one, however, this is my toque. And if you call this kind of hat anything else other than a toque, you're wrong. You're just wrong. This toque is phenomenal. It's great. The thing about toques, though, is if it's raining, they don't really do much because they can get really wet and it's not really a pleasant experience. So stick to something to keep the water off your head. We'll go back to the BVS hat and we'll close up this compartment because there's nothing else in there of value to this video. Um, jackets. I'm going to talk about... No, let's talk about jackets now. One of the big keys to winter photography, in my opinion, and basically everybody's opinion that does it, is you need layers. Because when you're out hiking and walking, you're going to get hot really fast, so you want to take off layers. And then when you're stopping and waiting for a sunset, you might want to put them on. So rather than getting one big puffy jacket, get multiple jackets. The other thing is it's going to make it way easier to be, to be maneuverable, to move around. You don't want one of those big Canada Goose jackets when you're shooting pictures because you want to be able to move around. You don't want to bump stuff. So what I like to do is layer. I've got this really, really light fleece jacket and I've actually got two similar jackets, one there and one there. They're very, very light. They're very good fleece and they're going to just keep that warmth in on you. That's going to be my base layer on top of my t-shirt. Throw those aside. This is a shell. This is water resistant. I think it's actually waterproof. This will keep the water off of me and uh, that's really, really important. <laughs> I made a mistake. I ordered a down filled jacket that also has a water resistant layer, a waterproof layer, and it's amazing, but it's arrival date's too late for this Scotland trip. So I'll have it for Iceland, but it's not on this video. If you want something really warm, get something down filled that's also water resistant or waterproof. That's going to do so much good. Um, more sweaters and layers. 
rubber boots, gum boots as we call them in Canada. I buy the winter version, so these are fleece lined. They're obviously waterproof. They're gonna keep your feet warm. I think these are graded to about minus five, minus six degrees Celsius. So nothing super special. You can get rubber boots that are graded to like minus 40 degrees Celsius. And uh, I, the reason rubber boots are so important is when it's winter time, the absolute worst thing that can happen is your feet can get cold. Your feet can get wet. And when your feet get wet, the rest of your day is just miserable. This not only allows you to keep dry feet, but it allows you to get into rivers and get into the water and not really worry as much about having wet, cold feet at the end of the day. So I'm a massive fan of gum boots. They're gonna save your life. Throw those away. My photography socks. Those aren't really helpful to winter photography, but get yourself some really good wool socks. Dry, warm feet are like the key to a happy photographer. Um, there's photography stuff, not really important. These are important. These are wind and waterproof pants, or trousers as the Brits might call them. Winter, they're great. They're fleece lined as well to keep you really warm. Underneath these, I'll wear like a, a long underwear that's really light and thin because what you want to stay warm isn't necessarily big and puffy. You want to create your own heat. So if you have a really thin layer underneath this with this fleece, your own body heat is going to create like a circulation and warm itself. And this is going to stay really warm. It's going to keep you dry. And like I said, the real goal in Iceland and Scotland is to stay dry rather than warm so much. Um, I think this is the last thing I'm going to talk about in this video, which probably will be a little bit short, but that's okay. And that's these photography gloves. Disclaimer, Valorette has given me these gloves. They haven't paid me or anything like that, but they give me these gloves and I love them. I actually was given a pair like a year and a half ago and I love them so much that I asked them for a winter version. So I have like a spring version that are quite light. They're very thin. I have them packed in here somewhere as well, but I asked them to send me these ones and these are their winter ones. There's also a little liner. So this liner gloves good if it's not super cold because yeah, you can put that on and these finger pads allow you to use your touch screen and stuff like that, which is great. If it gets really cold, you've got these serious winter gloves. These gloves are awesome because one, they've got this grip. It's this really grippy material on the front. So your camera's not going to slide away if it gets cold or wet. They're super warm and they've got these little flaps on the fingers. I'm not sure if you can see that the little flaps can close up if it's cold and they've got these magnets on the back so they can flap up if you're trying to operate your camera. I love these Valorette gloves. There's even a little waterproof or resistant slot there that you can stick like a memory card or something like that. And that's it. That's all my gear. I think you don't really need to take winter photography as intensely as you might think. Stay dry, create layers, keep your hands and feet warm. And that's about it. In terms of actual photography gear, the most important thing is these two things. This towel, this is by 3M. This is actually for buffing cars, for removing, like when you're done waxing a car, I think, you just take this and it totally dries it so you don't get any spots. This is great for camera lenses or filters that are definitely probably gonna fog up and maybe even get water on them. So get one of those and you're gonna need about 50% more of these camera batteries. If you're used to shooting one camera battery a day and you're going to do winter photography, make sure you get double because camera batteries last between 50 and 70% less when it's really cold outside. So I walk around actually during the day if we're hiking or stuff with the camera batteries in my pocket close to my body to stay warm, just to give you a little bit more life out of them. But be sure you buy a couple extra batteries before your trip. I think that's it. Honestly, like I said, winter photography, I think some people really, really take things super seriously when it comes to winter photography, even when they're close to their car. I think, like I said, the big goal is to stay dry and to keep the wind off you. Those are the two really, really, really important things. So I'm going to leave you guys with that. There's a lot of fun stuff coming up as I head to Scotland. I'm going to Inverness, to Glencoe, doing Hogmanay for uh, New Year's in Edinburgh. And then we're going to Iceland for that photography workshop. So it should be a lot of fun. And I hope to see you guys on the next episode. Peace.